10 seconds. Five, four, lock. Live from the Sirius XM Elvis Radio Studios at Graceland in Memphis. You got Clyde here. It's half past the hour. And over there in the blue suede interview chair is David Rhymes. Dave, how you doing? Doing just great, sir. Now you got a buddy over here, uh, <laughs> you, part of your family. I know Phil, I work with him. I see him every Thursday when I go down to record the Elvis Hour. And uh, But I, I, you look like you're made in, in music business. Uh, no, not really been in the music business. I played music growing up, playing gospel music, country music, stuff like yeah. that, quite a, quite a long while. He used to lay and sleep in the little car chair in front of the drums, never moved muscle the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you from, David? I'm from here. That's what Phil, Phil told me. He was from Memphis. He went to, like, Overton High School or somewhere. Uh, where'd you go? No, you, David. I mean, uh, Phil. No, I went to Horn Lake. Horn Lake, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, David, where did you go? I went to Horn Lake. Horn Lake okay, Island. the Horn Lake Eagles, huh? Right. Yep. Well, David, uh, what's what's the family occasion? You got Jill out there, your daughter-in-law. She's all going to be a mama. And also <laughs> with her is uh, Chad Pitt, who does afternoon drive, and everyone here in Memphis, all my buddies, because I see them every Thursday. It's old home week when I go over to cut the Elvis hour. Yep. I see all those people up and down the hallways, and it's a lot of fun. This is a special day for all of us, really. It's uh, my birthday as well as my son's. Wow. And my future grandson that Miss Jill is carrying for us. Uh, this year is really going to be special. So oh, it is going to be a boy, Phil. Yep. It's going to be a boy. We'll Aww. all be, we'll all be we, here next year, I guess, celebrating uh, our grandson and uh, my son and my birthday. Well, that's right. Well, you know what we need to do then? What? Have Elvis sing him happy birthday. Yeah. yeah. Okay, watch this. Wait, well, get, uh, count it off, Big Jim. One, two, three. <laughs> That's awesome. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Yay! Yeah. Happy birthday, David Thanks. and uh, Philip. Thank you. And uh, the new edition, I guess. Yeah, we're not going to tell you the name yet. We're not going to tell you the name yet. Yeah. Yeah. Eight more, six more months, Philip? Yeah. yeah. About six more months. Yeah. January well, David, how is it? Uh, tell me about I know you really like you. Philip tells me that. You really are into Elvis, always oh, yeah. have been, and you admired him very much. I used to sit up late at night when I was uh, barely a teenager and would have headphones to do the old eight tracks and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Oh, yeah. For late hours of night, you know, two, three o'clock in the morning, let's go to sleep. And, uh, yeah, I've I, I grown up listening to the guy. Well, now, Philip has a band. Are you with a band, right? I am with uh, Gary Goen, G3, but I'm also working on my own music. Gary Goins, yeah, he's a real cool guy. Yeah. I've seen him at the Blues Ball a lot uh, and around town. Well, well, David, evidently you turned Philip on to music then. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Uh, his, his mom does uh, great vocals. Yeah, well, she does. Yeah, she does. Uh, so it's kind of bred into him. He can't help it. <laughs> you, know what? you know what? That's interesting, Big Jim, because that was Elvis's deal. Yeah. Vernon and Gladys were really, you know, into the church music, and Elvis used to sing with them. That's how he got into that. They mm -hmm. brought him along singing with them, and that's how it, how it all developed. Yeah, yeah, sure did. Well, Philip, it, uh, have you been through the house yet? Yes, we did. We, we spent the whole day here pretty much. Yep, you've been here all day. Yeah. And, and your opinion, some of the rooms you really like? I was really impressed. Uh, I liked the, the, the jungle room, especially. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, the uh, dining room area was really nice. Yeah, yeah. I liked that as well. Mm -hmm. The TV room was impressive. Downstairs with three TVs. Yeah. Right. It, was, it was very impressive, the whole thing. Learners yeah. uh, uh, office was great. Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed the whole, the whole tour. David, are you retired? Are you still in business? Or no, I'm still working. Where are you working? I work for Memphis Compress Company. Is that a cotton company? Cotton warehouse. That's all we do, warehouse yeah. cotton. Yep. Is that downtown? So, yeah, 3rd and Mallory area. Now, Memphis. do they still have those things called snakes? You know they what I'm talking about? They used to. They're kind of getting away from all that. A snake is just yeah. a long tube of uh, bag that they put cotton in and roll it up real tight for samples. Uh, and then they used to, I used to watch it. I go down on Front Street. And Memphis used to be the cotton capital of oh, America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jim, all on Front Street, was, every little office was a was a cotton office. Sure. And they had all these cotton snakes. They caught them on the sidewalk, and they bring them in, and they would test them for the quality, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. And then the guys would make the buy. Then they send one down to ship up right. the cotton and go to the mill and so forth and so right. on. Is that basically That's exactly it? Exactly it. That's right. Yeah. George knows something about everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Mallory's used to own this company, and Mr. B. Lee Mallory was named King Cotton at one time. Yeah, B. I can't remember who the lady was that made Queen Cotton, but yeah. Mr. B. Lee Meyer was King Cotton. But see, Jim, what you don't know is cotton was king, man, around Memphis. For me it, was, it was the number one cotton capital of America, and then, of course, the modern world moved in and things changed a little bit. But I remember the, and then they would go by and they would ch uh, collect those snakes 
They weren't real. They were samples. They were long, about three feet long, or four feet long. Is that right, Dave? Grew a little bit since then, but yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's what they started. And out. then they did a cool thing. At the end of the day, they would take all those samples, some or another, and they would donate them to charity or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they would take what was left of what they couldn't use per se, yeah. and make different simple things out of, and give it to charity and stuff like that. But they would take a lot of it and make cigarette butts and stuff like yeah. that. With it. You couldn't really do anything with clothes wise. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. They made a lot of different stuff with it. Great. Well, this, David Rhymes is our guest. David has a son named Philip Rhymes who works with us over at a local Memphis radio station. Uh, it's actually, I can say this, I can say Intercom. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Intercom is a broad, broadcasting a corporation called Intercom. They've got five, is it five radio stations, six or seven? Or it's five. Five radio stations in one building. And it's really cool for me, an old, old radio guy, to walk in, Jim, and see all these people in these studios talking, and they all jump out. Hey, GK, what's happening? What's, how would you have done this? And what's the latest? Would you got a commercial or yeah. promo for us? It's a lot of fun to go over there. Yeah. It's like a candy in a toy store. I mean, a kid in a toy store for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it would be, absolutely. I have the perfect segue for you to go from cotton to the Elvis song, Teddy Bear. You stuff a teddy bear full of cotton. How's yeah, that? That's Very a good, good one. All right. Well, let me learn before David splits here. Uh, David, thank you for coming by. It's been a pleasure. And you, I guess you took a day off on your, it's a Labor Day weekend, huh? Actually, uh, where I work, we get our, bir our birthday off for a uh, Okay, what, you're with what's it, what cotton company again? Memphis Compress. Memphis Compress. David, you take care. you got a nice man here over here named Philip. Very proud uh, of Ryan's and a great daughter-in-law who everybody's in love with around the station. She's so beautiful. Could have made it to Hollywood. It's not over for her yet. No, it's not. She's still very young and very talented. You know, you see her. You see, Ken, uh, you see Jill. Gosh, she's very pretty. But then you start finding out what a talent she is, Jim. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, man, this young lady could make it in Hollywood. I don't know about an actress. I'm talking about a TV, radio, or, right. or maybe a sitcom or something, you know, like that. And, and she's going to have a little baby. That's right. Oh. <laughs> and she's good people, too. Good people. Yeah, she really is. She did my TV show. I'm, I'm kind of mad at her, uh, David. Uh-oh. <laughs> and Phil, they put me on on my TV show. She and her co-host, Ron Olson, were on my TV show all a couple of shows back. And uh, Ron actually, he turned the table on me. I used to do this, and I, he, he caught me off guard because on TV, it's not like radio. You, you, radio, you can clown around, turn the mic off and cough or <laughs> say something crazy. But anyway, they're on my show, and Ron Olson said, oh, before you go, GK, he said, uh, Justin Timberlake is coming into Memphis to shoot a movie, and Jill and I are going to be the focus of a morning radio show. I bought it. <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get him back. You know what I'm going to do? What are you gonna do? I'm going to have people from the Hollywood Reporter yeah. and from Daily Variety call him yeah. and say, Mr. Olson, about this Je right. Justin yeah. Timberlake movie, yeah. we'd like a story or a quote from yeah. you. Give us a quote. <laughs> there you go. They're all cool people. They That's really right. are. Well, David Rines, thanks for dropping by. And... Uh, your son, Philip, takes care of me. He makes me sound good down there when I do my shows. They can put all those whistle bells and whistles on there those spots. They call them spots, commercials when you record them. Make you really sound good. And they can edit so easily these days. I used to have to read a spot. My producer, my gym right here, he'll remember this. In the old days, David, you had to read a spot over and over and over until you got it right. Or they'd splice it. You get it halfway, then they take a splice bar with scotch tape and... But now they just press a button, and man, you're right there. there you Everybody go. sounds great. Is that right, Big Jim? It's like George Jetson. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> well, here's a teddy bear for the Rhymes family. We got that right. The yeah. old Rhymes family yeah, had right. yeah. some birthdays. I'm George Klein. We're live at the Sirius XM Mobile Radio Studios at Graceland and MG. That stands for Memphis, Tennessee. Cool. Uh, there you go. <laughs>